Hi, I'm Sophia from Armenia. Please like and subscribe. When I was little, my mom and I moved a lot. We changed towns every few months, and I couldn't help noticing that I was different from the people around me. Even mom. Everyone had dark eyes and hair, so my blonde curls and green eyes attracted attention. Wow, she's so precious. And well, she looks nothing like you. Is she really yours? Mom always smiled and said I looked like my dad, but I knew she didn't like the comments. And soon, we moved again. Don't look at anyone directly and never take your hoodie off outside. People get jealous of your beauty, love. I was six when mom started working as a cook in a mansion, and she told me strictly to never leave the kitchen. One afternoon, mom had gone out for groceries when a tall woman walked in, and she stopped short when she saw me. Aren't you a beautiful little girl? Why don't you come with me, honey? As I was in her living room eating cakes and chatting nonstop, mom came bursting in. There you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. Sorry, mistress. Oh no, I brought her here. From now on, she'll spend time with me while you work. Mom wasn't happy at all, but I'd have the best time. The mistress helped me with my reading and gave me lovely gifts. But a few weeks later, she said she wanted to adopt me. I can give her every luxury in the world. Her life will be a thousand times better as my daughter. How can you even ask this, ma'am, to part with my own child? I would never. You fool. If you truly cared about her, you'd let her have the life she deserves. Also, I looked up your records, and there's no birth certificate for any child of yours. Leave her with me, and we can keep all our little secrets. She reached out for my hand, but I grabbed hers and bit it hard. She screamed as Mom and I ran. Pack your things, quickly. Hurry. And so we left, but this time, we kept traveling till we reached some docks late at night. We're leaving for the U.S., darling. We'll never know any peace here. Someone Mom knew helped us sneak onto a cargo ship, and we left to start a new life in New York. We spent the first few months in a homeless shelter, but Mom found a job at a restaurant soon, and we could afford a small place. Mom even let me join the public school after changing my name. When I asked why, she said it was for my own good, and I didn't ask anymore. Even though I didn't really stand out here, people still admired my looks. In fifth grade, my friend Melissa, who participated in beauty pageants, told me to try out too. The prize money was good, so I begged mom to let me join. And I soon became a pageant queen, and modeling offers started pouring in. By the time I was in high school, I'd done my first national ad for a shampoo, and my face was on a billboard. One morning in 10th grade, I walked into the school hallway to see some kids gathered around a boy. He turned his face, and I caught my breath. He was beautiful. He threw his head back and laughed at something, and it was the most captivating sound in the world. Suddenly, our eyes met, and I realized I had been staring at him like a moron. But I had to find out who he was. I walked into class to find all the girls talking about this handsome new stranger. Just then, we heard a loud groan. Ugh, jeez. I'll tell you who he is if you give me $20 each. And for $50, i will introduce you gals to him. He's my brother. The new boy introduced himself as Derek and said his brother Adrian was our senior. Just then the teacher walked in and everyone flew to their seats. I caught Derek looking at me and he smiled. He was cute, but his brother was a Greek god. One day, I had to reach a modeling audition after school. And as I quickly crossed the road, my heel got stuck in a pothole. As I struggled to set it loose, I looked up to see a motorcyclist charging straight at me. But suddenly, someone pushed me out of the way. I opened my eyes to see Adrian looking down at me. Hey, are you okay? I, I, I think so. Nope, I feel dizzy. Adrian swept me up effortlessly and carried me to his car. He took me to the hospital and it turned out I had a minor concussion. Your mom's on the way. I called her. Thank you. I am so lucky you were right there. Well, it wasn't a coincidence. I was actually following you to ask you out. Really? Why do you sound surprised? I can't be your first admirer. You just might be the most beautiful girl I've ever met, Sophia. He touched my cheek and my heart fluttered. Just then mom walked in and she couldn't stop thanking Adrian. I was discharged soon and he even dropped us off at home. Adrian and I started dating and the next few weeks were like a dream. He was intelligent and thoughtful and always knew how to make me laugh. We were the golden couple of the school. 
A few days later, I got paired with Derek for a science project, and we met up at the library to discuss it. It's funny, we've hardly spoken before, especially since you're in my class and I'm dating your brother. <laughs> well, Adrian has that effect on girls. They fall head over heels for him and see nothing else. That's not true. And I'd like to get to know you. Let's all have dinner sometime. Uh, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Listen, Sophia, there's something... What's going on here? Hey, we're working on our project and I was just... He's your project partner? No, that won't work. I'll talk to your teacher and have your partner changed. What? This is none of your business, dude. It's very much my business, dude. I don't want my girlfriend to fail. Which she will? With you. Derek looked furious and stormed off. Adrian, you can't tell me who to be partners with. And what's wrong with your brother? Listen, babe, you don't know him. He's not serious about anything, and he just thinks he'll inherit millions one day without lifting a finger. I'm already working with Dad and his company, and freeloaders like Derek just bother me. Trust me, he's gonna make you do all the work and just take credit for it in the end. Just ask your teacher to change your partner, please. Derek didn't seem like that, but Adrian knew his brother better, and he looked upset, so I requested the teacher for a partner change the next day. Life was good. Except that lately, I'd been getting rejected after auditions, and Melissa had gotten a few ad campaigns I'd really wanted. But she was my friend, and I was happy for her. We were at a party together one evening, and I noticed Adrian was really quiet on the way home. Hey, you worried about something? Yeah, just you, babe. You trust people way too easily. What do you mean? You don't think it's strange that Melissa has suddenly been getting every single commercial? She's rich. What if her mom paid bribes to get her those parts? What? No. Melissa would never do that. She's the one who got me into modeling. And she probably regrets it now, since you've been doing so much better than her. Jealousy can really change people, Sophia. Trust me, I know. His words made me uneasy, but I decided to ignore him. But a few days later, Melissa and I were at an audition for a lipstick commercial, and she kept forgetting her lines. I had a flawless audition. So I was shocked when Melissa was selected again. <laughs> hey, I was so sure you'd get that. Yeah, me too. Wait, why do you sound mad at me? I'm just as surprised. Oh, drop the act. It makes no sense you'd get selected, unless you paid your way in. <laughs> what? Are you crazy? I can't believe you'd stoop so low. Adrian was right. He said this about me? Sophia, you've known me since we were kids. Why are you letting this guy... He's my boyfriend, and he's clearly less naive than I am. Melissa and my other friends stopped talking to me after that, and it just made me angrier that they all took her side. Thank God I had Adrian. Soon it was our two-month anniversary, and Adrian wanted to celebrate in style by taking me out on a date to a classy French restaurant. I want you to sit on this side, facing just me. I don't want anyone else to admire your beauty tonight. That's a bit weird. And so cheesy. It's just how I feel. And here's your present. Adrian, you've already done so much. I gasped as I stared at a gorgeous Amber necklace. See? How could I not get that? It's like it's made for you, Amber. My heart was pounding as he put it around my neck. Why... why did you just call me Amber? Did I? Obviously a mistake, Sophia. Now, shall we order? I felt so distracted that I could barely read the menu. I needed some air. I excused myself to go to the bathroom, but just as I got up, I bumped into the waiter bringing our drinks. Oh, I am so sorry, madame. No, it was my mistake. Here, let me help you. Oh, please, don't worry about it. I'll get you some drinks. As he ran off, Adrian turned to me coldly. Why were you flirting with the waiter? What? I was just trying to be nice. But suddenly, Adrian swiped all the plates off our table. Don't play me for a fool. You kept touching his arm. You... You're insane! I'm leaving! I ran out of the restaurant and looked around for a cab, but Adrian caught up with me. If you walk away now, I'll make your life miserable, Amber. Why do you keep calling me that? Just stop it! Because that was your name before you came here, wasn't it? I know all about your past and you can't escape it. Yeah, I'll have you and your mother deported to Armenia and... Suddenly, Adrian tripped over something and fell down, hitting his head. I frantically called an ambulance and used Adrian's phone to call Derek to the hospital. What happened? He tripped over something. The doctors say he'll be fine, but I... I can't stay here another minute. Sophia, what really happened? I broke down and told him how crazy Adrian had acted in the restaurant. 
I wanted to warn you, you're not the first girl he's done this with. He's the perfect boyfriend at first, but then he gets so jealous and scares every girl away. It's not just that, Derek. He, he knows things about me, and he's threatening to ruin mom's life and mine. If you tell me what it is, maybe I can help you. I need to talk to mom first. Of course, and you need to be sure you can trust me. I looked into his warm brown eyes, and I felt I could. So the next day, I asked Derek to come to my place, and mom told him everything. I'm not Sophia's mother. I'm her aunt. Sophia's parents passed away when she was a baby, and I was her guardian in their will. But her other aunt and uncle kept insisting that I give Sophia to them. They only wanted her because of all the money in her name. They were powerful people, and I knew they'd keep trying to take Sophia away from me. So I ran away with her. We traveled far, but I'd always felt they'd find us. Then we came here and changed our names, and it seemed like we'd finally left everything behind. Until now. We can't go back there, Derek. I'll do everything I can, I promise. I couldn't bear to go to school for the next few days. I felt sick with anxiety. Then finally, one evening Derek showed up, and he was smiling. My lawyer worked on your case, and given how long you guys have lived and worked in the US, your status will be made legal immediately. You can't be deported. No one's going anywhere. Mom and I cried and laughed as we hugged, and I threw my arms around Derek too. Thankfully, Adrian still hadn't returned to school, and I started hanging out with Derek. I also apologized to Melissa. Sophia, I was so affected by what you said that I confronted my mom. She didn't pay for me to get those roles, but someone did, and I have no idea who. I do. It was Adrian. He did it because he wanted to turn me against everyone close to me, but I never should have doubted you. A few days later, I just put some stuff in my locker when I turned around to see Adrian. Hi, Amber. Did you miss me? You wish. And don't think you can ever bully me or scare me again. I don't care what you know. You can't use it. Wow. What a transformation from the chicken girl I last saw. But yeah, I just came to tell you that I've lost all interest in you. Seems like you've really lowered your standards when you settled for my brother. And I don't date trash. He walked away, and I realized I'd been holding my breath. But minutes later, I heard loud voices down the hallway, and I ran to see Adrian smashing Derek against the lockers and beating him up. It took four teachers to pull Adrian away as he screamed like a maniac. You want everything I have, don't you? You always have, you little worm. Do you think I'd let you be happy? I'll ruin your life, Derek. You'll regret the day you ever crossed me. Derek went home early, and I was completely shaken by the day's events. Later that night, I was having trouble sleeping, and I heard a loud tap on my window. I sat up in horror, only to realize it was Derek. Gosh, you scared me. How are you feeling now? I can't feel my face, but my heart's happy. I just had to tell you. Adrian went completely bonkers at home, too and my parents have admitted him to an institution for therapy. That's such a relief. I'm sorry you got hurt because of me, Derek. Don't be. I'd take a hundred punches for you. Well, not a hundred, but you know what I mean. And Adrian's right about one thing. I've wanted to be with you since I first saw you. He leaned in and kissed me, and it was lovely. We graduated from high school and both went to the same college in another city. Right after graduation, Derek and I got married in a small ceremony with our parents. Adrian was apparently out of the institution now and managing his dad's company in Europe, but of course, he wasn't invited. And a year later, we were blessed with a beautiful baby girl, Sarah. Hi, I'm Violet from Vermont. If you like my story, like and subscribe to MSA. I grew up with a single mom who made sure to provide everything for me. Mom was awesome. But whenever I'd see my friends at school with their dads, I'd ask mom about my dad and she'd just make light of it. I asked him to get bread one time. Looks like he's still searching the aisles. <laughs> Even though she laughed, I knew the question bothered her. So I stopped asking. My mom loved me to bits and that was all that mattered. One time when I was 13, everything changed. I was just minding my own business when a fight broke out in school. I tried to get out of the way, but a kid shoved me. When I got up, I saw a huge puffy rash appear on my skin, and I screamed. What was that? I was taken to the doctor, who told me I had dermatographia, a major skin allergy to anything I touched. 
My skin was sensitive to everything, even just scratching an itch. The doctor told me it was normal for it to start at my age. She reassured me the rashes passed quickly, but the condition would not. Mom, these look so ugly. Oh no, darling, you're just overthinking it. You'll be fine, we'll get you new clothes. If you're uncomfortable telling it to others, you don't have to. Of course I didn't want to. After that day, I started wearing long sleeves and jeans and even wore gloves. But soon, kids started to have a problem with me being covered from head to toe. I would always tell them that I had a condition, but they'd ask me to show it to them and I didn't want to. My illness wasn't some freak show. Are you some kind of werewolf? Do you have tons of body hair that you have to keep yourself covered? Or maybe she has scales. Who knows? It's so weird. Who knew people could be so annoying? One time, as I was putting my books in the locker, a girl came over to me. It was Charlotte. We were both in the same class. How come you always wear long sleeves? Another one. I was so done with these questions now. It's never too late to shut up and mind your own business. Wow, so rude. I was just asking, because you know kids say so many things about you. But I know the reality, I think. Well, I know you have a tattoo. That's why you keep yourself so covered, right? Bingo. Whoa, really? How did you get it? My dad would never let me. I guess if my mom was still living with us, then she would have allowed it. Oh, she didn't have her mom with her. That made me feel sad and I decided to cut her some slack. I asked her to sit with me in class, and it turned out she was a pretty nice girl. I liked her. Soon we started watching MSA videos and hanging out after school. My mom welcomed her into our home with open arms, and her dad was really nice to me. Nice to meet you, Violet. Dad, you're embarrassing. Thank goodness Violet understands how it is. What really solidified our friendship was when we went ice skating. I was so afraid of falling because my rash would appear, and when it did, I was so embarrassed. But Charlotte, she was so understanding. Ah, it's nothing. Come on, let's skate more. Over time, we became best friends, and we were super close. One time when I was in ninth grade, I saw mom talking to someone in a hushed voice on the phone just as she saw me enter the house. Well, that was weird. I tried to leave it alone, but it became a routine. She'd be on the phone, and the moment I'd appear, she'd act on edge. One night, I heard her go out, and when I looked out the window, I saw mom with Charlotte's dad. What the heck? I even told Charlotte about it, but she wasn't too concerned about it. But I was, because it started to happen almost every other night. When I confronted mom, she straight out lied. No, honey, I just went out to get some milk, nothing else. Hmm. But when one night I heard mom leaving the house, I decided to follow her. Suddenly, a car pulled up in front of me. Just then, I heard a familiar voice. You look like you need a ride. It was Ben. He was the new guy in school and a couple of years older than me. And since he was so active in the students' council, everyone knew him. He was someone I could trust. So I got into his car and followed mom. So, who's in that car? My mom. I want to catch her red-handed today. She's been sneaking out a lot lately. <laughs> That's a first. All of a sudden, Ben hit the brake seeing a cat, and before I could jolt, he grabbed my wrist. Are you all right? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. It's nothing. I, I just don't like being touched, okay? We found my mom at a small diner sitting across from Charlotte's dad. After Ben dropped me off, I barged into the diner. I knew it! You lied! Violet, it's not what it looks like. Please, sit. Honey, please. I didn't want to, but seeing mom plead, I sat down. I should have told you earlier, but I wanted to wait for the right time. Violet, Charlotte's dad is also your dad. What? It's true. Darling, I am sorry. Leaving your mom was the biggest mistake of my life. Now, I want to make up for lost time. Apparently, dad and mom had dated, but broke up after I was born, and Dad moved on to marry Charlotte's mom. And now, Mom and him wanted to get back together. My head was spinning. They both lied to me. Why now? Why wait all this time? Does Charlotte know? She doesn't know about this, and I'm afraid I can't tell her right now. The divorce from her mom has been tough on her, and I wanted to wait until the right time to break the news to her. Can you keep this a secret, please? No, none of this makes sense, and I hate you. I ran out of the diner with tears in my eyes, but mom chased after me and drove me home. She begged me to give him a chance. Don't you at least think Charlotte should hear it from her own dad? She had a point. 
so I agreed. For now. The next day at school, I was feeling so nervous to face Charlotte. Hey girl, I tried to call last night. How about we catch a movie tonight at my place? At her place? No way! Right then, I saw Ben walking down the hallway. Before I could think of what to say, he came up to me. Violet. Ben! Charlotte, this is… my date tonight. Date? date? Yeah, we're going out. Right, Ben? Uh, yeah. I'll pick you up at 7. See ya. Vi, this is your very first date! I felt bad lying, but hey, it was a good save. But at home, mom told me dad wanted to talk to me. Alone. And I had to see him. But in the evening, I found Ben waiting for me at my door with flowers. Oh, uh, oh, I am so sorry. I totally forgot about our date. I have to meet my, um, someone. As I started walking, Ben offered to drop me off and I accepted. I met dad at a park and he had nothing new to say except tell me how sorry he was about leaving mom and me. Please, don't you have anything new to add to your story? Listen, honey, I know... Don't you dare. You don't get to call me that. You can't just come waltzing back into our lives and act like everything's fine. Saying that, I ran out of the park and saw that Ben was still there. When I asked him why he waited for me, he told me how he just wanted to make sure I was alright. I found that quite sweet. On our way back home, Ben got me some ice cream and we talked. He sure was a sweet guy and I was liking him. A lot. All of a sudden, Ben came near me and touched my nose. Got it. You were looking cute with some ice cream on your nose, though. Oh, I thought... I was gonna kiss you. <laughs> um, that wouldn't be so bad, would it? It sure wouldn't. But the rash? Gosh, I couldn't tell him about it. What if he was grossed out by it? I told him I wanted to take things slow, and he nodded. After that day, Ben and I started to go out often, and I guess that's why avoiding Charlotte became much easier. Whenever she'd asked me to come over to her place, I just told her I was with Ben. So? Does he know? I almost jumped, thinking she meant about Dad, but she was just talking about my skin. No, and you can't tell him. I just can't deal with that right now. Okay. How about I ask my dad to come pick us up and we can go to the mall? I feel like I'm not spending enough time with you. Um, maybe later. A couple of days later, I was having lunch when Charlotte joined me. But just when Ben came and sat next to me, her face twisted. She got up and walked away. I followed her and when I asked what happened, she went bonkers on me. Ben, 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 he's always around you. Do you know that you have a best friend too, who is missing you? I thought we were like sisters, but now you're ditching me like I'm some third cousin. You don't even come over to my place anymore. Well, that was cause I didn't like seeing her dad, our dad, but I couldn't tell her that. But I realized it wasn't her fault. After all, Charlotte was my best friend. So I decided to go to the movies with her after school and she was ecstatic. We had loads of fun at the movies, but just when we got into the cinema's elevator, the door suddenly closed before others could get in and the lights went off. Oh God, this wasn't good. Getting stuck in an elevator was my worst nightmare. Vi, you okay in there? I'm calling for help, hang on in there. Charlotte, fast, I can't stay in here. Every second passed inside that elevator felt like a lifetime. Finally, when the elevator door opened, I saw Dad. He instantly swept me in his arms. Oh my God, my baby. I was so worried. When Charlotte called, your mom and I rushed here. I just couldn't imagine losing my daughter again. What did you call her? What's going on? Dad had no choice but to tell her the truth. And when he did, Charlotte went completely ballistic. Out of nowhere, she transformed into a loud, angry monster. How dare you lie to me? You're ditching me, just like mom did. Charlotte, please, at least listen to him. Dad had a reason. And you, you knew about this? How could you do this to me? You and your mom, stay away from us. Saying that, Charlotte ran off and her father followed her. I was so shocked, I didn't know what to do. I was sure that Charlotte would understand eventually. After all, she loved me and always considered me a sister. I was really expecting Charlotte to apologize at school, but she just stared at me. The last thing I want to do is see your face, you liar. Charlotte, you always wanted us to be sisters, right? Can't this be a good thing? I don't anymore. Why did you have to lie to me? Right then, I saw Ben walking towards us and seeing him, I saw a vicious look on Charlotte's face. Maybe it's because you're a natural born liar. 
You lied to me. You even lied to Ben. Did you tell him your secret? What is she talking about, Violet? Charlotte, stop right now. Oh no, I'll tell you, Ben. Better yet, I'll show you. Suddenly, she pinched me hard on my arm. By the time she was gone, a huge allergy spot had appeared where she pinched me. Everyone stared at my arm, including Ben. He didn't say one word, but the look in his eyes made me realize nothing between us was gonna be the same anymore. Because of the stunt Charlotte pulled, she got detention while I called mom and she picked me up. I just couldn't be at school. I refused to talk to mom and didn't even go to school for over a week and just locked myself in my room. I even turned off my phone. I just wanted to be away from everything and everyone. Thank God winter vacation started and I had some time to deal with the whole drama. One day, mom entered my room and hugged me. I felt like I hadn't hugged her in a million years. Mom, can we move away? I don't want to go to school. See Charlotte, her dad, Ben, anyone. Honey, that's not the right thing to do. I know what Charlotte did was very wrong, but put yourself in her shoes. I never told you, but when Charlotte's mom left, the poor girl was completely traumatized and depressed for months. She totally lost it. Oh my God. Turned out, Charlotte had had a huge breakdown when her mom left. She needed years of therapy and only stopped going recently, which is why mom and dad thought she could finally be ready. But perhaps they were wrong. That would explain her reaction. She went through so much. You should have told me, mom. I should have known about her condition. Honey, we thought to tell her when the time was right, but the way things unfolded left her shocked. The entire night, I kept thinking about Charlotte. Her mom had already left her. No wonder she was freaking out about me stealing her dad from her. I needed to make things right. First thing in the morning, mom drove me to dad's. He had Charlotte standing up front who was so angry, she was shaking. Why are you here? To tell you that I love you and that won't change. I love you both too. Even before you knew about Violet, I loved you both, sweetheart. You don't love me, Vi. You abandoned me for Ben and now I will forgive what you did. I can't be abandoned again. I can't. No one is leaving, Char. I understand you were hurt. I just wish you would have told me. I stepped closer to her and grabbed her hands. But you hate being touched. I don't care. You are more to me than any skin rash. And it's about time you knew it. We're family. I should have never tried to hurt you or keep you away from my, our father. I was selfish. I'm so sorry. We all went into the house together for our first family breakfast. Charlotte and I got closer than ever, and our dad was pretty cool too, but no one was better than mom. A week later, Charlotte made a plan for us to visit a ski resort in our town. Considering what a disaster our last outing was, it was so much fun. We both went for the ski lift, and just as I sat, I saw Ben next to me instead of Charlotte. Talk, you two! Well, it was awkward, considering how hard I was avoiding Ben lately. Uh, I'm I sorry. You. I then showed Ben my skin condition, and he just smiled, saying how it only made me cool. Charlotte, your arms are beautiful. I can't believe you'd hide something so cool from me. You know, I think so too. May I? Ben drew I love you violet with his finger, and it appeared quickly in big puffy letters, but it was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. He kissed me on my lips, and I didn't have an allergic reaction. After that, I learned to listen, trust, and be proud of who I was.